If you're about to go to an Orlando Informer meetup, or if you're considering going, these are some mistakes that you're gonna want to avoid. Hey Pew Crew, welcome back. If you're new here, on this channel we talk about all things theme parks, mm -hmm. including updates, news, and even tips and tricks for your next theme park vacation. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. The Orlando Informer meetups are just around the corner, and if you bought tickets to this year's event, you may be wondering how you can make the most of your nights. So what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to talk about four things you should avoid doing at the meetup as well as what you should do instead. Before we get into it, we did want to explain what the Orlando Informer meetups are and what you can expect there. This is an after hours event that takes place in Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure hosted by Orlando Informer. Naturally. <laughs> what they do is a few times throughout the year, they rent out the parks and they sell a limited number of tickets to this event. At the event, your ticket does include unlimited food and non-alcoholic drinks. That means butterbeer. <laughs> <laughs> Your ticket also gets you access to both parks after dark and the wait times are incredibly low. So now that we all know what the Orlando Informer meetups are, let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing on our list is don't get there on time. What? <laughs> The event officially begins at 5 p.m., but you can pick up your tickets for the event as early as uh, 3 p.m. Okay, yeah. So, so even though the tickets don't get you access to the parks until 5, the line does start building up at 3 p.m., and that line can get extremely long. Yeah, I mean, it was long last year, but... Yeah. They got through it pretty quick, like it moved very, very fast. So. But if you get to the parks right at five and then have to pick up your tickets before you can actually get into the parks, you're gonna waste some of your precious time that you get in Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure. And if you do get there early to pick up your tickets and you get through that line before five o'clock arrives, you can go hang out in CityWalk to pass the time. And if you're wondering what there is to do in CityWalk, we just put out a video talking about that exact thing. So we'll put a link to that video down in the description Yeah, you below. can watch it after this video. <laughs> but after. Um, Another thing to keep in mind about the meetup is that the free food and drinks doesn't start until later that evening. Like we said, the event gives you access to the parks at 5 o'clock, but the parks don't close to daytime guests until 7 or 8, depending on which night you're going to the event. The free food and drinks don't start until an hour after daytime guests have left the park, but Orlando Informer has done something to combat this. They are giving a $15 food gift card to every person that has purchased a ticket. That's two butter beers. <laughs> This card is basically a gift card, but it is only good for food and drinks. But if you are 21 years old and you have a valid ID, you can use this food card on alcoholic drinks. But it gets even better than that. You can also use this food card in City Walk while you wait. The next thing on our list is don't ignore the emails. When you purchase your Orlando Informer tickets, they're gonna ask for an email address so they can send you your ticket confirmation, but they send you a lot of other important information via email as well. Yeah, so you wanna give them an email that you actually use. Like for instance, I don't wanna give them my old email, jimmyjimmybobimmy6 <laughs> at hotmail.com. <laughs> A few weeks prior to the event, they will send you an email that tells you when and where you can pick up your tickets, as well as what park you've been assigned to start in. If you are going to the event with a group and you purchased your tickets separately, it is possible that some of the group got assigned to one park and some of the group got assigned to the other park, but don't worry. If this is the case, you can just call Orlando Informer and they will take care of that for you. This email also tells you what name your tickets are under. So for example, we got our email about a week ago and it says that the tickets are under my name. Jimmy Jimmy. <laughs> and the reason that this is important is because it does say that I have to have my ID present when we pick up these tickets. 
Another thing that we are super excited for about the Orlando Informer meetup is that we have an opportunity to ride the Pteranodon flyers. <laughs> this is the only attraction in either Universal Studios or Islands of Adventure that we have never ridden. Yeah. And that's because you do have to have a child between certain heights to be able to ride it. And in that email they sent, it did include a link where you could fill out a form and express your interest in riding that attraction. So if you want to ride it without having to borrow someone else's kid. Yeah, so real quick while we're on that subject, um, there's plenty of them running around, kids, that is. Uh, you don't, don't just borrow somebody's kid without <laughs> permission. No. Uh, just, just fill out this form. It's going to cost you way less in court fees. <laughs> <laughs> so you do want to make sure that you fill that out and then keep your fingers crossed that you do get chosen. This email also contains information on early ride closures. So some of the bigger attractions do shut down a little earlier in the night. So this is something that you want to be aware of so that you don't miss out on any of the attractions that you're wanting to ride. Yeah, so your bigger rides, your loud rides like Hulk, Rip Ride, um, Hagrid's, yeah. so kind of the coasters. They have to shut down an hour or two early because of noise ordinances and things like that. So yeah, definitely something to keep in mind because you would hate to get there wanting to ride Hagrid's like five or six times and just miss it all together. Our next tip is don't eat before you no, go. No, like we, like we said, this event does include unlimited food and non-alcoholic beverages. Butter beer. And in our experience, this does seem to be the biggest draw for the event. Yeah. A lot of times the food lines are a lot longer oh, than the lines close. for the actual attractions. So it can help to have some strategies in mind to help you wait as little as possible. One thing to be aware of with the food is that some places do serve you a smaller portion than yeah. usual. And this is specifically, for the best. this is especially true with some of the themed food and drink options like butterbeer and Florian's ice cream. But what a lot of people don't realize is that you can order more than one thing at a time. Three so <laughs> instead of waiting through the line three times, you can order three butterbeers at once and save yourself the time that you would be waiting. And speaking of lines, when the free food does become available, a lot of people make a beeline for some of the more popular restaurants, like those in The Wizarding World or Bumblebee Tacos. Yeah, crepes, uh, green eggs and ham, the good stuff. And so what happens is these restaurants get an extremely long line. So what we suggest doing is when the food first becomes available, make your way to one of the less popular restaurants, like maybe Wimpy's or Mel's Drive-In. And then later in the event, once the lines start to die down, you can hit up those popular restaurants and save yourself some time. And our last tip is don't stay off site. We always recommend people that are visiting Universal to stay at an on-site hotel because they do come with such amazing perks, but this is especially true at an after hours event like the Orlando Informer meetups. At the end of a very long day and night in the parks, the last thing that you're gonna feel like doing is walking all the way back to your car and then making your way all the way back to an off-site hotel. Let's just be honest. There's not much walking going on. If you do the OI meetup correctly, you'll be like rolling out of there. Uh, you know what, Willy Wonka? Uh, <laughs> Violet, Violet, how she just they roll her around? That's exactly what it should be like if you do it correctly. Now, if you're a local, Oompa. If you're a local, it may not make sense for you to stay at one of the on-site hotels, but if you are traveling from out of town to go to one of these meetups, we absolutely suggest that you stay on site. Another benefit of staying on property for the Orlando Informer meetups is that Orlando Informer actually reserves a block of rooms at some of the on-site hotels, and they offer these rooms to people who have purchased meetup tickets at a discounted rate. So on top of getting all of the awesome perks that come with the on-site hotels and being incredibly close to your room at the end of a very late night, you also get these hotel rooms at an awesome price. So we highly suggest booking these rooms through Orlando Informer when you purchase your tickets. 
We did want to let you guys know that we will be there December 4th for the Orlando Informer Meetup. They were nice enough to send us an invite down for the event and we couldn't be happier. We're going to drink all the butterbeers. So a huge <laughs> shout out and thank you to Orlando Informer. But with that, we are going to end today's video. Leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know, how many butterbeers do you think I'll drink? <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, give us thumbs up. You can hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell notification so you get an alert every time we post a new video. Thanks for watching at least 30.